The Millionaire Fast Lane. Part 1 Wealth in a Wheelchair, a Get Rich Slow is Get Rich Old. The Great Deception the EMTV Cribs E Episode That Never Happened. Host, today we visit 22-year-old Big Dadiha and his 8,000-square-foot crib here on the beautiful Atlantic coastline live from sunny Palm Beach, Florida. So, Big Dadiha, tell us about your rides. Big Daddyho, yo dog, we got the Ferrari F430 over there with the 22-inch rims, the sick Lamborghini Gallardo over there with the custom 10-speaker stereo, and for those nights when I just want to chillix with the ladies, the Rolls-Royce Arnage does my do. Host, is so, Big Daddyho, how can you afford all these gorgeous rides? And this mansion on the beach? It must have cost more than $20 million. Big Daddyho. Yo let me tell you dog, Big Daddy Ho got rich chilling in mutual funds and popping fat money in my 401k down at my Wingo wireless job. Suddenly, you hear a record screech off the turntable. Silence. As you can imagine, this scenario would never happen. Big Daddy's answer is preposterous and laughable. We're smart enough to know that wealthy 22-year-old kids don't get rich investing in mutual funds and stashing money in their 401 Burmese chats from their job at the cell phone store. We know that people who get rich young fall into a unique subset of society, pro-athletes, rappers, actors, entertainers, and famous people. Those of us outside this demography are left with the traditional advice showered upon us by financial experts. It's called a get rich slow and sounds something like this. Go to school, get good grades, graduate, get a good job, invest in the stock market, max out your 401k, cut up your credit cards, and clip coupons. Then someday, when you are oh, 65 years old, you will be rich. Get rich slow is a losing game if you want to get rich and to get rich slow is your strategy, I have bad news. It's a losing game with your time wagered as the gamble. Do you seriously think that? The guy who lives in that palatial beach estate with the $500,000 supercar in the driveway got rich because he invested in mutual funds? Or clipped coupons from the local super saver? Of course we don't. So why do we give credence to this advice as a legitimate road that leads to wealth and financial freedom? Show me a 22-year-old who got rich investing in mutual funds. Show me the man who earned millions in three years by maximizing his 401k. Show me the young 20-something who got rich clipping coupons. Where are these people? They don't exist. They're fairy tales of impossibility. Yet, we continue to trust the same old tired gang of financial media darlings who espouse these doctrines of wealth. Yes sir, get a job, work 50 years, save, live mindlessly frugal, invest in the stock market, and soon, your day of freedom will arrive at age 70, and if the stock market is kind and you're lucky, 60. G doesn't. This a wealth in a wheelchair financial plan sound exciting? In today's tumultuous financial climate, I am shocked people still believe these strategies even work. Wasn't it the recession that exposed to get rich slow for the fraud it is? Oh I get it, if you're employed for 40 years and avoid 40% market downturns, get rich slow it works, just sit back, work, and hope death don't. Meet you first because, golly gee, you're going to be the richest guy in the retirement home. The message of the Get Rich Slow is clear, sacrifice your today, your dreams, and your life for a plan that pays dividends after most of your life has evaporated. Let me be blunt, if your road to wealth devours your active adult life and it's not guaranteed, that road sucks. A road to wealth codependent on Wall Street and anchored by time with your life wagered as the gamble is a dirty, rotten alley. Nonetheless, the preordained plan continues to wield power, recommended and enforced by a legion of hypocritical financial experts who aren't rich by their own advice, but by their own millionaire fast lane. The slow lane prognosticators know something that they aren't telling you, what they teach doesn't work, but selling it does. Wealth young, is it bullshit? The millionaire fast lane isn't about being retired old with millions, but about redefining wealth to include youth, fun, freedom, and prosperity. Take this comment posted on the Fastlane forum, is it bullshit? You know, the dream to be young and live the life, to own the exotic cars, to own the dream house, to have free time to travel and pursue your dreams. Can you really get free of the rat race young? I'm a 23-year-old investment banker in Chicago, Illinois. I make a modest salary and modest commissions. By most people's standards I have a good job. I hate it. I cruise Chicago's downtown and I see some guys living the life. Guys driving expensive exotic cars and I think to myself. 
They're all fifty or older with silver hair. One of them once told me, you know kid, when you finally can afford a toy like this, you're almost too old to enjoy it. The guy was a fifty-two-year-old real estate investor. I remember looking at him and thinking God, that can't be true. It's gotta be bullshit. It's gotta be. I can verify it isn't bullshit. You can live the life and still be young. Old. Age is not a prerequisite to wealth or retirement. However, the real BS is thinking you can do it by the default get rich slow construct at least by the time you hit your 30th birthday. Believing that old age is a precursor to retirement is the real BS. The real BS is allowing a get rich slow to steal your dreams. Reinvent retirement to include youth say retirement, and what do you see? I see a crotchety old man on a porch in a creaky rocking chair. I see pharmacies, doctors' offices, walkers, and unsightly urinary undergarments. I see nursing homes and overburdened loved ones. I see old and immobile. Heck, I even smell something musty circa 1971. People retire in their 60s or 70s. Even at that age, they struggle to make ends meet and have to rely on bankrupted government programs just to survive. Others work well. Into their golden years, just to maintain their lifestyle. Some never make it and work until death. How does this happen? Simple. Get rich slow takes a lifetime to travel and its success is nefariously dependent on too many factors you cannot control. Invest. 50 years into a job and miserly living, then, one day, you can retire rich alongside your wheelchair and prescription pillbox. How uninspiring. Yet, millions undertake the 50-year gamble. Those who succeed receive their reward of financial freedom with a stinking lump of turd, old age. Gee thanks. But don't worry, patronization reigns from the heavens, these are the golden years. Who they kidding? Golden to whom? If the journey devours 50 years of your life, is it worth it? A 50-year road to wealth isn't compelling and because of it, few succeed and those who do settle for financial freedom in life's twilight. The problem with accepted norms of retirement is what you do not see. You don't see youth, you don't see fun, and you don't see the realization of dreams. The golden years aren't golden at all but a waiting room for death. If you want financial freedom before the grim reaper hits the on-deck circle, get rich slow. Isn't the answer. If you want to retire young with health, vibrancy, and hair, you're going to need to ignore society's default, get rich slow, roadmap and the gurus spoon-feeding you the slop in the trough. There is another way. Chapter Summary, Fast Lane Distinctions Get Rich Slow demands a long life of gainful employment. Get Rich Slow is a losing game because it is codependent on Wall Street and anchored by your time. The real golden years of life are when you're young, sentient, and vibrant. How I Screwed Get Rich Slow Exposing the Get Rich Slow Driemkeller As a teenager, I never gave myself a chance of becoming wealthy young. Wealth Plus youth was an equation that didn't compute simply because I didn't have the physical capabilities. Common roads to wealth for the young are competitive and require talent. Become an actor, a musician, an entertainer or a pro athlete, all roads that had a big, road closed a sign that laughed, not a chance, MJ. So, early in life, I conceded. I gave up on my dreams. Get rich slow made it abundantly clear. Go to school, get a job, settle for less, sacrifice, be miserly and quit dreaming about financial freedom, mountainside homes, and exotic cars. But I still dreamed. It's what teenage boys do. For me, it was all about the cars specifically, the Lamborghini Countach. The 90 seconds that changed my life I grew up in Chicago and was a porky kid with few friends. I wasn't interested in teenage girls or sports, but lying around in a beanbag stuffing my face with donuts while watching Tom and Jerry reruns. Parental supervision was absent, mom divorced dad years earlier, which left my older siblings and me to be raised by a single mother. Mom didn't have a college education or a career, unless a deep-frying job at Kentucky Fried Chicken qualified. That left me to my own indulgences, usually consumption of sweets and the latest episode of the A-Team. My exertions were epitomized by a long broken broomstick, I used it as the TV's remote control since the real one was broken and I was too lazy to move. When I did move, the local ice cream shop was often my target, a sugary delight was a motive I could. Count on. That day was like any other day, I sought ice cream. 
I plotted the flavor of my next indulgence and headed toward the ice cream parlor. When I arrived there it was. I was face to face with my dream car, a Lamborghini Countach famous from the 80s hit movie Cannonball Run. Parked stoically like an omnipotent king. I gazed upon it like a worshipper beholden to its god. Awestruck, any thoughts of ice cream were banished from my brain. Posterized on my bedroom walls and drooled upon in my favorite car magazines, I was acutely familiar with the Lamborghini Countach, cunning, evil, obscenely fast, spaceship doors, and ungodly expensive. Yet, here it was just a few feet away, like Elvis resurrected. Its raw tangible grandeur was like an artisan coming face to face with an authentic Monet. The lines, the curves, the smell. I gawked for a few minutes, until a young man left the ice cream parlor and headed toward the car. Could this be the owner? No way. He couldn't have been more than twenty-five years old. Dressed in blue jeans and an oversized flannel shirt with what I spied to be an Iron Maiden concert shirt underneath, I reasoned this couldn't be the owner. I expected an old guy, wrinkled, receding gray hairline, and dressed. Two seasons late. Not so. What the heck? I thought. How could a young guy afford such a kick-ass automobile? For God's sake, that car costs more than the house I live in. It's got to be a lottery winner, I speculated. Hmm, or maybe some rich kid who inherited the family fortune. No, it's a pro athlete. Yes, that's it, I concluded.